Hey, welcome to Info Gamer. Today we're doing the shot animation. So our doodle jump character is actually gonna move when he shoots. Okay, so we're gonna add an animation to our box dude character for when he shoots a bullet. So the first thing that we're gonna do now that we're here at Unity, we're going to open our animation window. So we'll go to window and then we'll go to animation and then let's drag it over and we need to make sure that we select our box dude object in our hierarchy and then go here where it says create we're going to create a new animation we we'll want to make sure that it's in the animation folder and we're going to name this one idle Oops. That's an L. Idle. There we go. And hit save. Now we need to go to here where it says add property. And you'll see this drop down menu, and you want to find where your sprite is for your character. And it's under this object, which is a child. As you can see, it matches here in the hierarchy. And we'll click on our sprites, our sprite, and then we'll go to this sprite renderer property, and we'll scroll down until we find sprite, and then we'll hit this plus button. For our idle, we don't need to alter any of this, we just need to make sure that it's selecting the sprite and keeping the sprite as our standard image. Now we need to create a new animation for when he shoots the bullet. So we'll click on this drop down menu and hit create new clip. What should we call this one? Shot animation. Call it shot animation. All right, so we're gonna start off with doing the same thing we did with our idol. I can find my mouse. Go to here, add property, and then hit sprite. Then let's hit sprite renderer. Open that. Don't know what. Then click the sprite and hit add. Now this animation is going to be shorter, so let's drag it a lot smaller. How small are we going to drag it? Mm, one more frame to the right, I'd say. Yeah. Then let's click our sprites folder and get our other sprite that we're going to add in for our animation. Once you find the sprite you want, you click and drag it into both keyframes. Uh oh. We just added another keyframe, but that's okay because I just deleted all of them. <laughs> Reclick. There you go. Just click on the keyframe and you're good. How long do we want this one to be? You only want this animation to be a fraction of a second because he's going to shoot a bullet real quick and then he's going to go back to his normal position. So those are the two animations that we need. Now we'll, we'll need to go to our animator window. So we'll close our animation window, go to window. Now where are those animations being stored before we so get too far we've, along? We've been saving them in our animation folder under our assets. So if we scroll up, here's our idle animation. And then we'll scroll down and there it is. There's our shot animation. Cool. Okay, so now we'll go to Window, click on Animator, and it'll bring this up. Let me expand it real quick. So you can see that we have these two animations here, and this is a lot like a state machine, and we can explain what a state machine is in a future video. But we basically have these two animations, and we need to make a transition between both of them. So we'll right click, click Make trans uh, Transition, and then click on the other one. And we'll do the same thing for the shot animation to the idle. Now we need to create a parameter. And this is a way that we can communicate with the animator component in our script. So we'll click on this plus sign, and we want an integer. And we're going to name this stages. 
and hit enter. Then we want to click on our first transition and this will appear, this window will appear in your inspector and we want to make sure that has exit time is unchecked. Then we'll go down here to conditions and we'll hit the plus sign and we'll make sure that it's set to stages which is our parameter and we'll want to change the value to 1 and set it equal to rather than greater than. Then you want to make sure that the time is dragged down to there. That's the time it takes to transition between one stage to another. And because our, our transition is quite instant, you want to make sure that it doesn't have any flowing transition. It just goes straight to it. Once you've done that, we'll go ahead and click on the other transition and do pretty much the same things. We'll make sure that this is unchecked and we'll drag that down to zero transition time and then we'll hit the plus sign here on conditions, change this to equals to and then we want this one to be zero rather than one. Once you've done that, it's now time to go to our code. So we'll go ahead and close our animator window and then go to Visual Studios or Mono Develop and make sure that your game controller script is open. All right, let's write in a little note for ourselves. Shot animation. So we can remember what these variables do. And let's name it public animator dude an. That's just gonna be abbreviation for animator. So this, um, we're calling the animator. And what is that doing for us? So the animator is the data type for this variable. This makes it so that we can access the animator component that we just created on our doodle jump character object. Cool. That's freaking sweet. All right, let's scroll down and we're going to right, we're going to put a line of code in our shooting function and this is going to be dude and dot set integer parentheses and in the parentheses we'll we'll get to that. Let me type this up. So we want to have stages in here and then we're going to set it to 1 on this line of code. Make sure everything's spelled right. And we'll get rid of all the errors that you have if it's spelled right. And then let's create a sort of a function thing and Nate will do this. So it's returning an I numerator. So we'll type I enumerator, it's capital I, capital E. And then we'll call it two idle animation. We'll open that function and inside we're gonna write yield return new then wait for seconds and inside we'll put a time value. So let's put like 0 0.05 and then F for float. And after this line, let's write dude and set integer, and then inside the parentheses we'll write stages and we'll set it equal to zero. So what this function does is it's really just a clock where when, when this function is called, it's going to wait 0 0.05 seconds before it runs the next line of code inside this function. And so what we need to do now is call this function right after this line of code that we've made in our shooting function. So to do that, we'll say start coroutine, and then inside parentheses, we'll call our ienumerator function. Just like that. So the first line of code, the dude and dot set integer stages to one is taking the parameter that we have in our animator component and setting it equal to one so it'll play through the transition from 
our idle animation to our shooting animation. Then we want our code to wait a little bit of time and then switch back to the idle information, uh, idle animation. So we call our to idle animation and then we wait 0 0.05 and then we change that stages parameter back to zero. So let's go ahead and save this and go back to Unity. All we have left is to drag in our box dude to our game controller component right where it says Dudan. And then should be able to run this puppy. Let's click. Oh, we got a hat. There we go. Our animation's working for our shot. Sweet. Now, one important note to make is that when we were creating the animations for our doodle, our box dude character, it automatically added an animator component to that object. So before, we didn't have this component here, this animator component, but when we were creating our animations, the first time we created one and saved it, it added this and created the animator object, which is saved in our animation folder here. Hey, thanks for watching and staying with us to the end. Make sure that you subscribe and stay tuned for all our future videos. Yeah!